When modeling objects with rotational symmetries, for example, cylindrical objects, pyramids, cones, etc., that have an odd number of sides, a common occurrence is to find out rather late in the project that the original symmetry has been broken. Let me show you what I mean, and I'm sure you will remember a time when this happened and you couldn't figure out why. The easiest way to show this is by using a five-sided disk. So I've created a disk primitive. I'm going to set the inner radius to 50, the outer to 100, one segment and five. Press enter, and I'm going to go to my top view. And uh, you can see that it's uh, a uh, circle because I need to change from isopalms to wireframe. And uh, now we have uh, the, the proper points. I'm going to press C to make it editable. And uh, I'd like you to observe the following thing we can see the object axis is right in the center of our world, 0, 0, 0. Fantastic. Now, I'm going to go to points mode, use my rectangle selection, and select the inner points. And you will see now clearly that the axis is offset by 4.775. The reason this happens is that for any of the shapes that have some sort of rotational symmetry, we have the radius always equal. So this is 50, this is 50, this is 50, 50, and 50. But if this is 50, then this is definitely less than 50. When we have any of the move, scale, or rotational tools selected, in the Attributes Manager Modeling Axes tab, by default, the axes, and we're talking about the modeling axes now because we are in component mode, is set at the average of the selected components. And the selected components have a bounding box, as we call it. So if I create a rectangle here, I'm going to make it um, 20, 20, and just go and increase the, the height so that it uh, is approximately where this point and this point is. And I'm going to extend this a bit to the side and then move it over here. Okay, make it slightly larger. So this rectangle now is what the bounding box of the selected points looks like. Now the way to remedy this is by going to your scale for example which will pose the biggest problem because if I scale these in now they will not scale to the center of the object but to the center of the bounding box of the five points. And although this may not be very visible when you're in your 3D view because, for example, if you're looking from this side, perspective compensates for the difference in the sizes of these uh, lines, which are not equal anymore. And especially if you have a 3D object, you may not be able to realize before it's quite late that this is not properly centered. So let me undo a few times and go back to this situation here. Now, what I can do is, with my scale tool selected, for example, I can go to the modeling axes and change the axes instead of selected to be the object. So now the modeling axis is exactly where the object axis is. And uh, for this case, it's going to work perfectly. So these are going to converge towards the middle of the object. So the rotational symmetry is going to be retained. But what if we have an object where, for example, these points are higher up? And you will see that I move them and immediately the axis goes back to the object axis position. So in this case, I have a problem that if I want to scale these in two axes, if I do this, they scale down towards the object axis. So let me undo. I have two ways of uh, working with a situation like this. First of all, I can go and hover over this little triangle. And if I click and drag, then I'm constraining the scaling to the uh, XZ plane, so to these two axes. So I can do exactly what I wanted to do. Now, if for any reason you don't have access to your axis gizmo, for example, if you're zoomed in, then in this case, what you can do is lock the Y axis. So now that the Y axis is locked, it's not going to change. So I'm getting a scaling only on the X and Z axis. In the same way, if I have the move tool, and uh, you will observe that each and every one of the tools can have a different uh, axis locks. If I go to the move tool now, if I want to move this up, because my axis is down there, I can either just grab the Y axis, but if I can't see it, I'm going to lock the X and the Z. So now, when I move, it goes only up and down, and when I scale, it goes only in and out. 
And by knowing that my axis now is the object axis, anything I do here is going to be correct. So I'm going to go to Edges Mode, select these, go to the Move Tool, press Command, drag this upwards because only the Y is available. Um, then I'm going to go down here. Let's do a loop cut here, a loop cut here, and a loop cut here. And then I'm going to use my loop selection, UL, select these points, and I'm going to press T and scale them in, and then I'm going to press E for move and move it up and down. And you will see that this object has an absolute perfect rotational symmetry, which we can observe over here. So now you know why this happens sometimes. A lot of you may not even be aware that this happens, because your models may not be uh, viewed from very close or from a top view. But either way, remember that with odd-sided shapes, this will occur unless you change your axes to be in the correct center. To close off this quick tip, I need to remind you that this does not only happen when you're doing component modeling. So we have a five-sided cylinder here. I'm going to make it editable. And I want to move my axes down to the base. So I'm going to use my trusted axis center tool. I'm going to set my Y axis to minus 100%, press execute. And uh, I think I'm very happy with this. But look at this here. It's moved it towards the X axis by the same value we saw earlier. So if I go to the top view, you will see that my axis has moved. And this is because the axis center tool centers based on their bounding box. So in this case, the only way to fix this is to go to your axes and go and set this back to zero. And now everything is in the right position. It's centered from this view and it's based firmly on the bottom of my cylinder. And with these things in mind, I hope your modeling will become a more pleasurable experience.